What is going on guys, it's Cryptic TNG and I'm back with a brand new video. This time we're going to be doing something that I wanted to try quite a while ago, but now we've got all the new cars and all the updates. Um, I actually want to test which of these GT3 cars is actually the quickest in the rain. Now um, I'm going to exclude maybe the Lamborghini ST and the Porsche Cup car and I'll be testing everything else. Um, I'll be doing it around Catalonia because that's a track where normally most of the cars are quite equal so um i'll be using catalonia i'll be running the um storm condition so it's going to be really really wet so we're going to see which cars seem to have the best balance and which cars are the easiest to drive now i'm just going to put it on standard wet preset and maybe just change maybe brake bias and tire pressures and stuff like that and not make too many changes to the default setup and take it from there i will be doing it staggered so i won't be doing it all in one video because i, I want to really um, put a few laps in in each car just to get the best out of the cars that i can and that way we'll be able to see which of the cars are fastest and yeah we'll take it from there but let's carry on with the video So coming across the line we get a 2 minute 10.7 which was, wasn't too bad but the traction control really does cut in quite a lot and um, yeah it's a little bit tricky especially when it's this wet you feel the car sort of swaying going over sort of the um, the puddle sort of thing and because you can't actually see the puddles on the track it's pretty difficult but um, actually better than I expected I thought this car would really struggle in the wet but it was actually not too bad. Um, just the traction control does tend to cut in quite a lot, but if you lower it, then you're just going to end up in the wall. So yeah, moving on to the next car, which will be the new Aston Martin.
So coming across the line, we get a 209 flat. And to be honest with you, I think I could have gone quite a bit quicker than this. You see on the previous lap, especially through the middle sector, I was like four temps up on that. And um, I think probably a 285 would have been a, uh, a more representative lap. But I just, I didn't want to do too many laps. I just wanted to do a similar amount of laps with each car. But straight away when I got into this car, I could feel that it had a lot more compliance and it was a lot easier to drive. But onto the old Audi now. Um, it's going to be interesting to see between this Audi and the new one. Um, which one has more compliance in the wet weather. The, the setups are pretty much identical and I haven't changed too much so let's see how this car does um, and then after that we'll see what the Evo does and we'll be able to compare the Audis directly with each other. So we come across the line on a 209A in the Audi, which is eight temps down on, on the Aston Martin. And to be honest, in the Aston, I felt like I definitely could have gone quicker. But um, yeah, quite a big margin. Obviously, this car is a little bit older now. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Evo does compared to this one. Um, you would think that you'd, you'd expect the car to be a lot sort of closer together, but we'll see how it goes in the new Evo and see how fast we can get that going.
and wow, 2 minute 10.6, which is pretty crazy considering that's about 8 tenths slower than the older um, Audi. And yeah, I did um, try this car actually before this, and I, this is actually the fastest time I managed to do. I have tried it previously around here, but I thought, let me go back in this car, let me just absolutely make sure um, that this car is slower than the old Audi. But yeah, I just for some reason it's just not as quick it doesn't even feel drastically bad or anything like that but um pretty shocking man that the, the evo is quite a bit slower than the original audi and if you think about it, you think about the fact that i probably could have got a mid 208 in the aston martin um and a car now that's of a similar age is probably almost two seconds two seconds off that on a default setup um in the rain so whether the aston martin just got a particularly good default setup um on the wet set or whether the car is really that much slower um, than the Aston Martin in, in wet conditions is is pretty troubling man um, obviously I didn't do too much of these setups I basically just kept their setups um, as casual as I could I changed little things like tire pressures I tried to do the same changes for all cars I figured out which was the best sort of electronic setup where I could get a lap time without getting absolutely killed by traction control and the ECU and yeah made it as comfortable as i could but i didn't change any of the damper settings um i didn't sort of delve into the setups at all i just wanted to get a sort of a feel for the cars um in their basic state and see like if you were to just jump in the car and the race was where which car you're more than likely going to be able to compete with and at the moment the aston martin is a runaway leader but um the for the uh audi the normal audi the first audi to be quicker than the evo was quite shocking to me man I literally thought they'd either be extremely similar or maybe the Evo would be slightly quicker but it's actually pretty far off the pace. Eight temps is quite a big gap to be quite honest with you. Um, and yeah, hopefully when we do part two, we'll see some more cars getting a lot closer to the Aston Martin. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what the NSX does. I'm curious to see if the Aston and the Porsche have sort of bridged the gap to cars like the Lexus which was an absolute beast in the rain so anyway hope you guys like this video hope you guys like the video concept obviously I'll be coming out with part two and that'll be the next four cars so yeah hope you guys like it scripted TMG peace like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and see you guys later